students really do understand that in the 21st century, having people skills and being able to really use yourself and connect with people um, in a way that's uh, deep and meaningful uh, is a tool that you must have. Um, so it's value added to learn psychology, and I think students really appreciate that. There are so many different changes um, in our society and so much more diversity that I think people really uh, understand that they want to understand themselves a bit more and understand their neighbors, and they can apply that to corporate life. You know, you can move on, you know, to business or law or medicine or, you know, anything like that. But it differs in terms of what the content is. There are certain uh, topics that can really turn students off, like simply talking about theory separate from practice, you know, brain and behavior, you know, the uh, anatomy of the brain and things like that tend to be pretty dry and scientific. Students really perk up when you talk about developmental psychology, child psychology, uh, even abnormal psychology, because these are the types of things that they see in life that they really can't quite figure out. With uh, social psychology and abnormal psychology, there are upper level classes, there are 200 level classes. Uh, so you have students who have already gone through the general psychology courses, they know the basics. Uh, and when I teach those courses, I focus uh, more on uh, writing skills and thinking skills and also opening up to discussion because there's so much less of an emphasis on cramming all the content and we can talk about um, an issue for quite a while in a fairly open-ended manner. Uh, so part of it um, that makes it a bit more interesting to teach the upper level courses is that you're helping students develop better research methods, better writing skills, putting together longer, more complex papers, using the library, um, things like that, um, and also discussing uh, content and reading it critically. Uh, so, for example, in my abnormal psychology this semester, uh, in addition to you know the regular uh, content of looking at case material uh, and different um, disorders, uh, we're actually looking at films. So I have three films uh, that are scheduled to watch, and we can kind of critically analyze uh, some of the uh, problems uh, in abnormal psychology in terms of treatment diseases, diagnoses. We just watched an Ingmar Bergman film, Persona. So it was very different for students. They hadn't really watched art house films. I was able to show them how cinematically um, the style used by the director is very similar to the inner experience of someone who's in psychological distress. And they seemed to pick up on it and they ran with it. Uh, and they became armchair psychologists. Uh, and I let them know that there wasn't a right or wrong answer. It's just, you know, what's your reaction to this? How does it make you feel? So it's not about grading you on are you doing this perfectly, but are you stretching yourself to think you know, about something in a new way. It's more of a hands-on experience, not quite tactical, but it draws on a part of their brain that's not just staring at a textbook and remembering lines, which is you know, very, very difficult to do uh, and dry and boring. So multimedia obviously is very, very important. Uh, the publishers that I work with and the publishing reps have given me other multimedia type materials to use to enliven the coursework, video clips and things like that. Uh, so rather than uh, have you know, this lecture on you know, the theory of psychoanalysis, to have a nice video clip with Carl Jung actually um, being interviewed you know, in the 1940s you know, or 50s. You know, so you see the real person and it's not just kind of Carl Jung on a page. Um, and it's a different generation. You know, the students that we're teaching now are used to getting information in a multimedia format, so it just seems more natural for them to pick it up that way. Just yesterday in uh, Intro to Psychology, I keep calling it Intro, but it's, it's technically General Psychology, uh, Psych 100, uh, but we talked about the enduring issues in psychology, so the mind-body uh, experience, you know, um, is our behavior driven by kind of rational, you know, kind of cognitive processes, or is it driven by internal basic bodily urges, right? You know, Freud took the latter position, but then as psychology developed, more psychologists began to look at the brain and thought more about the brain uh, as being the driving force. Uh, then there's the diversity, universality uh, dichotomy, quote unquote. You know, is what we're looking at in psychology in this country applicable to psychological mechanisms and behaviors in other parts of the world? And how do we test that? So that opens up a conversation about the importance of replicating studies, uh, of having cultural competence, uh, and having a broader view and stepping out of the American context um, and saying to yourself, well, if I were in Sweden, would I feel the same way? If I were in Indonesia, you know, would this psychological measurement make as much sense? 
And because at BMCC you have such a diverse student body ethnically um, and coming from certain, so many different nationalities, you already have students who on one level or another um, is thinking about, you know, who am I with respect to this new place where I am? Um, so it really allows them to connect with psychology in that way. On the one hand, when you have such a diverse uh, student body, you don't want to center so much of what you're uh, teaching you know, on African American populations. Um, however, it's a specialty of mine. Uh, so I study African American mental health, but also study attachment theory. Um, so getting across the importance of looking at ethnic diversity is something that most students quite understand. Uh, I think that if there's anything that they can come away with is that in the same way that I managed to develop a career where I could maintain my interest in my ethnic background, but also contribute to science in my community, that if there, uh, for example, I have students, um, which again in New York is, shouldn't be surprising, but still is surprising, um, that are from, you know, Kashmir, you know, that are from places that are, you know, quite remote. You know, but they're here now, and for them to come away with saying, wait a minute, I have some questions about the Kashmiri community and Kashmiri mental health. Maybe I can do that. Where do I start? Right? That happens quite a bit. Um, also, African-American students do tend to let me know, hey, you know, I'm glad I have a professor um, like you. Where do I start? Um, but I let all my students know that I love my job, I love my field. Um, and if there's anything I can do to help them get into graduate school or whatever, you know, I'm more than happy to do it.